Hey, what's going on, Next Level Podcast listeners? Uh, Kevin Kaufman here, back with you uh, for another episode. And today I've got my good friend, longtime friend, and uh, I get to flip the script on for the first time today, Pat Hyben. Pat, how's it going, buddy? Good, Kevin. Good to be here, boss. Thanks, man. I'm so glad you could join us on the Next Level Podcast. You know, I've had the uh, I've had the awesome opportunity to be on your podcast numerous times, uh, but this is the first chance I've been able to flip the script on you. So I'm excited for this. So I'll try not to put you in the hot seat too much, buddy. But uh, this is going to be fun for me. All right, cool. Let's do it. Well, dude. So let's let's do this. So I, I mean, I know who you are. I'm a student of the game, and um, you know, obviously had, coming up through KW where you had sort of ended your kind of sales career. Uh, We have so many mutual friends in common. So I knew about you from the get go, but for the listeners out there who may be new in real estate, haven't heard your podcast or or read your books yet. um, Give us the elevator pitch about, you know, who's Pat Hyben and and like, what's your career like in real estate? Yeah, that's great. You know, here's the thing. I got my real estate license at 21 years old and I'm 53 So that's 32 years, 32, yeah, 32 years I've had it. Now, here's the thing, it's going to expire at the end of this year, so I'm going to let it go. But um, about 2011, which was, you know, six years, seven years ago, uh, I I sold my team. But up until then, uh, basically what I did is I, you know, I I was an agent. I was in in the trenches for 20-some years in the trenches, uh, you know, earned all the top honors at Remax and Keller Williams and, you know, um, did everything that all real estate agents do. Built a big team. At one point, we had 54 people on the team, had a mortgage company, had a title company. Um, You know, you name it, I did it, right? So hold on a second. So tell me, when did you start to build a team? Because I I don't want to gloss over that. You you were one of the pioneers in kind of the team building and and that's not lost on me, man. So Tell, tell me, um, now, nowadays, everyone's got a team, right? I know yeah. they sell $2 million a year and they think they need a team. So, you know, so tell me, like, when, when did you first start hiring people and going past just yourself doing work? I mean, what, what was that like for you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, it, you know, it happened in the 90s. I'm not sure of the year, but, um, you know, early on, I, I started high. I say, well, I would say in the early nineties, I started hiring telemarketers cause I, you know, I didn't even have a team, but I had telemarketers. Like I had, I, I, I would do all the telemarketing myself for the longest time. I would just call people. And then, and, and this is in the days of everyone had a home phone and everyone picked up their home phone cause there was no caller ID. Um, and then I, and then I started hiring telemarketers at night to, to call for me. I think that was really like my first team. But eventually I started hiring staff and things. And then I, I wasn't the one that came up with, you know, having agents on the team, but I, I, I was certainly one of the first. I mean, the, I remember it was either a REMAX convention or a Howard Brinton Star Power Conference. I'm pretty sure it was a REMAX convention I went to. And some agent there talked about um, ha- having another agent show houses for them and do the buyer work. And, and, yeah, this is an agent who's since deceased. And basically he said at the time, he said, you know, I bought a two door Mercedes. So I never had to put people in uh, my back seat again. Um, because again, you know, back then it was customary for the agent just to, to put people in their car and drive them around. You never, you never took two cars, but anyways, um, you know, I came home and I remember talking to people saying, man, I want a buyer agent. I want a buyer agent. And you know, I found one just through opening my mouth. And, uh, and that was my first team member. And uh, Janice, she was the first real agent team member. Everybody else was staff. But uh, so anyways, to answer your question, let's just say 1995, something like that, maybe. Dude, so, so there's a couple things there. First of all, you hired a telemarketing company. Was that your idea? Or did you get that from like a mastermind group you were in? Like, do you remember where that came from? Well, I took Floyd Wickman sweat hogs in like 1990 and um, Floyd said, you know, you basically, first of all, forget about buyers, just work list, you know, focus on listings. And second of all, the way you get listings, you just call everybody because there's a, a natural phenomena that if you call hundred people, let's say hundred people pick up the phone, you're going to have a couple in there. They're going to sell soon or sell like now. 
And um, so I started doing that and it just, it, it, it was just such a no brainer because of the profit margin. You know what I mean? It'd be all profit. And um, because it didn't cost me anything to pick up the phone, right? Remax was paying for my phone bill back then. And so, um, you know, so, so I hired him myself. I, and I don't know if, if I got the idea from somebody else or not. I, I, I put ads in the paper and I got housewives and people like young kids or younger kids that come in at night and just, just call with me, you know? And then at one point I had, full-time people calling during the day. And I found that wasn't as effective. They weren't as productive um, as, as the part-time people that came in at night. But, but nonetheless, I, uh, I'll say it was my idea, but it probably came from somebody else somewhere else. The, you know, the reason I bring that up, Pat, is like that, like today that might sound like, yeah, so many teams right now have ISAs and even some of them have built out great big call centers, like Greg Harrelson, for example, and, and so many others. But, in the 90s, like that was progressive, man. You were, that was cutting edge stuff there. That, that was, that, that's not, it was nowhere near as common as it is today. Like today, if I'm in a brokerage, I bet you there's, you know, 10 other teams that have some version of that. Whereas I'll bet you back then, there might not have been 10 people in the whole country doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people, I guess back then they were scared to do it too, or maybe they just, hadn't thought about it. I mean, you have, you've always had telemarketers for stuff. And back then you had telemarketers selling, you know, everything I, you know, it was before the internet. So now like how you're bombarded with ads on the internet that you don't want. I think that that's kind of how telemarketing was. Uh, if you want to hit somebody with something, you called them and said, you know, do you want to buy Amway or something? Um, but yeah, no one was really doing it to say, Hey, do you want to sell your house? Wow, man, that's um, that, that's pretty cool. Okay, so so you eventually so you start hot. You hire a buyer as a buyer's agent because you just decided, hey, I'm going to hire someone, and you did it. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned just a few minutes before that you were at one point had up to 50 people on your team or 54 people. Yeah, something like that. How did that go? I mean, what? What? I mean, how? First of all, how do you have enough leads and enough skills <laughs> for to to support a business that big, man? That's a really big business. Mm. Yeah, and, and this is before Zillow and everything. This is 2000. I mean, we peaked at say 08, maybe 07. Um, so, um, well, listings. So, you know, the more listings you have, the more buyer leads you have. And now it's not so much that equation, but it's still people call the listing agent direct, um, especially if you don't put in MLS right away. Um, but you know, when you had the listings and it wasn't going into Zillow or on the market, the only place I could get it was padhyben.com. You know, you got a lot of leads. You know, I think we had 17 buyer agents and the rest were staff. And what, what I did is I, um, you know, we had like 30 some staff. So um, what I did is I figured that you could make more profit by paying somebody a salary than you could make uh, by paying them a commission. So. Uh, I just hired out staff. We had, I had three listing agents that did nothing but go out on listing appointments. We had television commercials that came in that brought in a couple of leads a day. And then, um, and then each of those had two people plus a courier. So they essentially had a team of three people. Uh, so each listing agent had a team of three people and I only paid them 20%, but they got a team of three people that I paid salaries to and all they really had to do is go out there, list the house and bring it back. I like that, man. That's a, that's a great leverage point and absolutely a way to, to protect your profit margin in that business. Okay. So you were, you were obviously pounding the phones. You just mentioned uh, TV commercials. What, how, what else? And obviously your website, because you had so many listings, were, were you doing anything else? Were, like whether it's radio or print advertising, like what, what else were your kind of main lead, lead levers? Well, that's the thing, you know, television worked so well for us that we just kept doing more and more and we kept changing the commercials. You know, our commercials were real creative. They were real different. People liked them um, and they were very authentic. They just weren't like scripted commercials. They were scripted commercials, but they weren't, they didn't seem like it. Um, and uh, so 
we had a lot of fun with that and that was the, where the majority came from. But then, you know, from every listing that we would get on TV commercial, of course, other people would see the sign and then they'd call on the sign and say, I'm thinking about selling to the normal stuff like that. We did have a marketing department. I had three people in it and um, we were mailing out like over 500 postcards a day that was like just sold, just listed, um, that sort of thing. Damn. Um, so we had that going, uh, you know, we ba basically that was a time and it's probably like that sort of now, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. You tell me, but you, you couldn't lose. You really couldn't lose. Like you could spend money on something that was going to work. It was going to bring you a profit back. You know, now, nowadays, um, <laughs> it's a little different now from a standpoint of there's, there's so many shiny objects and there's a lot of shit out there being sold to agents that quite frankly doesn't work. Uh, in addition to that, and maybe even a bigger factor is that most agents in my experience um, get bored and don't follow through with something for the long term. So mm -hmm. let's just say internet leads. If I decided to start buying internet leads from my Commission Inc. website, right? Yeah. We would, and, we, and we have for years. We've, we've had great success with it. Um, if you go ask 10 other agents who've had that, they could say these leads suck, but what they what they really mean is these leads take eight or nine months. The consumer behavior has changed so much that they're not reaching out, and th so they'll get on my website even though they're not ready to to buy or sell or even have a conversation for another eight or nine months on average. And most realtors, in my experience, um, won't stick with it for that for that long run. They think if I make ten calls, that's follow up. Whereas kind of my mindset has been, I'm just going to call you until you decide to list and, or you tell me to, to get to go away. And even then I still might call um, because I know that eventually you're going to call. And I know that all the other websites that you're on, because you're on 10 others, because they can get all of the listings from everybody's website now. Um, so I know that they're going to be on at least 10 other websites. I know that those other 10 agents aren't going to call past week two. Mm. So my, my personally, my, um, my unfair advantage has been the fact that I'm hard headed and I'm willing to just keep running <laughs> after it until it works. You know what I mean? Cause I know that in the long run on average eight or nine months down the road, 95% of them are ready to, to transact business. Yeah. I think that was mine too, you know? Um, and I, and that always frustrated me about other agents. I don't care who, I don't care how good my agent was. Um, I always felt like I was harder headed than them. You know, I always felt like I had a higher belief structure I always felt like I saw the value of the lead more than them. You know what I mean? Like I would be like, you know, it, it, it still happens today, man, because I still give referrals. You know what I mean? I give, Oh yeah. I, you know, and all over the country I give referrals and, and it's a lot of them don't get followed up on. A lot of them I never hear again. You know, they just don't people. I, I you know, someone used to say Mary Jones is going to sell. And I would call Mary Jones and she would be like, yeah, not yet, but in the future. Even if she said four years, man, I would remember that shit. I would remember it. I don't know why, but I would remember it and I would have her on a system and I would call her constantly until she listed with me. I mean, so many ages, they just don't, they forget. Oh, damn, I forgot. How do you forget? It's somebody that wants to sell a $600,000 house, you know? It's money. I don't Literally, get it. It's money. It's a paycheck. I, you know, again, I think it just goes to that, you know, bright, shiny object syndrome and what's right in front of us. And, and some people, not all, I think, I think most want to do a good job, but I, there's just some that just don't want to work hard. Like they want, like they're willing to work the stuff that's handed to them. Um, and then, then there's the agents that are willing to get dirt under their fingernails, you know? And I was always one of those, like I'll, I always said I would just knuckle drag my way to success if I had to. And I obviously mm -hmm. try to get smarter, you know, the longer we've been in it. Um, but truthfully, when it comes to leads and lead follow-up, that was my thing. I, mean, I remember we sort of decided like that was the hill we were going to die on. It was about after the <laughs> short sale boom, you know, which, which is when I started my career, which was short sales in 07, 08, uh, up through the end of 11. I, we, made a, we, we made a commitment. And I said, this is the hill I'm going to die on. Referrals, because we were great at getting referrals. Mm long-term follow-up and mm. I'm never going to be beat out on long-term follow-up ever. And that yeah. was, the, that was where I kind of planted my flag. And luckily it helped us to navigate our way through a 
shifting and dynamic market and build something bigger than we'd ever had in, even in the short sale days. And so, um, you know, I, I think that work ethic is just lost on some people and other people, you know, it's just maybe they prefer to do things differently. I, I, I don't know, but I could tell obviously that you, you've, you, you obviously have that because you built such a successful organization um, that, you know, it eventually for you led to other opportunities, right? Because right. it wasn't just a Pat Hyben real estate team anymore. Like eventually you got in, you got into some other things. Like how did, how did that stuff like start presenting itself to you? And how did you, gosh, man, how did you decide what to, what to take advantage of and what not to take advantage of? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. I mean, you know, I, I lost a lot of money in the stock market and, and when the stock market crashed after September 11th and um, you know, it kind of woke me up to the point of like, oh, let me just focus on real estate because this is shit I understand, right? And and I remember, I, I so I had a stock account. I had one point two million dollars in this stock account, and I and it went down to three hundred fifty thousand. It went down eight hundred some thousand in twelve month period, right? So I went from being a millionaire to like, you know, average retirement savings heir or whatever. And I was still, you know, thirty something, right? So, um. Uh, but still, I was, uh, you know, I, it, it was, it tore me, my soul up. And uh, I remember calling the broker and of course, brokers never want you to pull out at the bottom. They're like, that's the worst thing you're going to do. It comes back. You know, if you, if you track the S and P for the last 50 years, you'll see the average. Is and they're like, you don't want to do it. Man. And I said, you know what? Screw it. Cash me out today. I took the cash and I bought, um, like seven houses in a period of 18 months. And, uh, I still have four of those houses and, uh, and, and, uh, and, and, and then I just started buying houses. Then, you know, I traded a couple in, turned them into red hotels. Eventually I owned, um, I was in about seven or eight hotel. I mean, um, not hotel deals, but, um, apartment deals of which several of those we just have sold recently because prices keep going up in multifamily and then bought a shopping center and you know other stuff and then you know so I'm kind of like this guy who has a, a house full of furniture and I'm always moving the damn furniture around it's just my <laughs> nature but it served me because I'm able to sell at good prices and you know not be attached to things as much that go down like I was at one point to the stock market. So we'll see, right? Yeah. So that that's cool, man. Uh, I guess I can't even imagine the, the feeling you had of watching your, your stock account go from north of a million down to a couple oh, hundred thousand. Brutal. Yeah. Cause every day you thought, well, it's, you know, today's the last day it's going to bounce. Yeah. It's going to bounce. It'll go, but it never, it just never bounced, you know, it just kept getting worse and worse. That's, that's crazy, man. So, okay. So you, so you start investing in real estate really heavily, right? Um, now, are you still running your real estate team at this point? No. Well, so in, when, when I wrote my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, which is my first book, um, I went on book tour. It was a seven month tour. I did 53 cities. And um, I came, I came to Phoenix. You might've been at KW then I don't remember, but I basically did about 50, Keller Williams offices and like three other random, like I did a Remax, I did an exit, stuff like that. And, um, and then, and, and, and so that took seven months out of my time. I, I was gone every week. Right. And, um, I, I, I basically did a book tour just, you know, an aggressive book tour. And so I did it. It, it hit, it became an, a bestseller because of my efforts, New York times bestseller number six in New York times and number two in USA today uh, for business nonfiction. And so I did that, but, but, you know, I came back and Mike, my partner had, had, you know, successfully managed my team. And at that point it was, you know, the market was in the pits, you know, we, we'd, we'd gone from 53 people to like nine or eight or something. And, um, you know, it just was no fun and for me right because because my mind had been warped so much so you know it was just it would it just felt didn't feel good so i said dude take it over so he he took it over um and and he's done well with it for the past you know nine or however many years it's been eight years um and and uh you know, my license is getting ready to expire now. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to just let it go because uh, I really don't want the headspace for it. I'm 
focusing on other things. I have this company, GoBundance, which is a men's business and mastermind. They just opened a women's division. We have 42 women and GoBundance women already. Um, and, we, and then I just wrote my second book, Tribe of Millionaires. And I'm not going on a book tour for that, but I'm certainly touring around podcasts like I am here today and things like that. And I've got other things that keep me busy. Um, so uh, I'm going to just try to focus on new things rather than, uh, than my real estate uh, sales business with, with Mike. And he's going to take it and kind of, you know, do his own thing. Good for him. Well, that's cool. Yeah, there's, there's no doubt podcasts are the new book tour. Uh, there's no sense in, in grabbing all those miles, right? Um, so tell so tell me about the, the your your new book Tribe of Millionaires. What what encouraged you to to write this book? Was there just something in in you that you had to get this out? Um, where did it come from? Yeah. So about five years ago, me and my business partners Tim and David, who who I did a lot of traveling with and did a lot of goal planning and things like that with, you know, um, started inviting friends on our long hikes and and our our trips and and suddenly we found that like a whole bunch of people wanted to come with us and um like adventure vacations uh, short and long ones and um we're like you know at one point we i think we climbed mount whitney it was like a five-day hike in the pacific crest trail and we had a bunch of people want to come and we said look you can only bring one friend each and so we each brought one friend each and then we got home and we we did, we were actually we traveled around the country. We were looking to buy a Dollar General store, and we went and looked at like twelve Dollar General stores all over Texas and Oklahoma and stuff. And and while we're driving, we just came up with the idea of GoBundance. We said, let's you know let's start charging people to hang out with us, so to speak. And then we started it, and um, now we have over two hundred members. If you include the women, it's over two hundred fifty. Um, and uh, it's a it's a mastermind where you share ideas. It's um, uh, it's basically an opportunity to emulate other people and become better in multiple facets. And it's kind of here's how the book started. So, twenty seven men from GoBundance were were going to Japan. Uh, we hired a book writer by the name of Dan Clements who. Uh, writes for Darren Hardy, writes for Hal Elrod. You've probably read a lot of his books. You just don't know it. Um, and he came to Japan with us and he interviewed those 27 guys intimately, right? Like they, like on trains, high speed trains, buses, wherever we went, he was talking to us. And then he said, you know, I think the concept of this book should be like a fable. And he created a character named Ethan Rodriguez. And what, what happens with Ethan Rodriguez is Ethan he has a falling out with his father. He doesn't speak to him for 22 years. His dad dies and he has to go to the funeral in order to get this estate settled. So he goes to the funeral and lo and behold, the six pallbearers are all billionaires and multimillionaires. And he's like, my dad was a deadbeat. I don't understand how, you know, all these rich, fit, successful, um, you know, happily married men are you know, my dad's Paul bears. It doesn't make any sense. And then one of the guys takes him aside and says, Hey, part of your dad's estate, by the way, is that you don't get the cash until um, you hang out with us uh, intimately. So they, they, they take him on a private jet to a private Island. And he then begins to discover six effects that happen when you hang out with people that are, you know, millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires, uh, successful at multiple facets of life and his life then begins to change as he discovers these things and you know I won't give away the whole story but that's the concept of the book and then and then throughout the book we have um, real life stories of abundance members who have say lost 150 pounds or say have have gone from owning no single family homes to owning a hundred single family homes or having shitty relationships with their kids to you know taking a father daughter vacation with each of their kids every single day, uh, every single year or whatever. Um, so the book is fiction, but it's based on nonfiction lives of our members. That's really awesome, man. I, I love the, um, I love the story there. Like I, I love the way you guys approach that. Um, and I just love the idea. I'm, I'm a big believer in masterminds and proximity is, is power and it does, it does matter who we hang out with. There's no doubt about that. Um, so, so real quickly, obviously, I'm sure I can get this book 
anywhere I want, but try is it tribe of millionaires.com. Is that like the best place for me to go get this book? Yeah. I mean, you can get it on Amazon. There's, you can buy it for 20 bucks. People are doing it. They were leaving reviews. It's only been out a week, but what we did is we printed a thousand copies before we put it on Amazon and we've got them stored. We've already given away about 600 of those thousand. And what we're doing is if you go to tribe of millionaires.com, you can get it for free. You just pay the shipping. It's like seven bucks. It's a no brainer. Um, and we'll ship it to you for free right away. Uh, it's just tribe of millionaires.com. I highly recommend it. It's a great book. Um, everybody that's read it so far is loving it. We're getting, you can go hashtag tribe of millionaires.com on Instagram and just see like 20 different people holding up the book and it, it's only been out a week. So it's really kind of cool to watch it, um, go viral on itself. That's awesome, man. Very cool. So, uh, you know, just know, knowing you the way I do and, and having here heard some of these stories and I know quite a few members in, inside of GoBundance, um, you know, I know some of these stories personally uh, and, and firsthand, like there's some good stuff there. And I, I love the, um, the idea of the way you guys set this book up. That's a, that's very cool. So my guess is it's going to be a great read. I can't wait to get my copy. Um, what else would you like people to know about, you know, whether it's Pat Hyben or, or Tribe of Millionaires or Go Bun, it's like, like what, what should we know? What makes this book different from other books out there that maybe give somewhat similar advice or talk about some similar concepts? What's the, um, for you, what, what's the deal that, that makes this the one to go to? Yeah, you know, here's the thing. You, you know, it's kind of a cliche. Well, the old cliche is the one your grandfather told you, which is if you lay down with dogs, you'll get fleas. And, and what your grandfather was trying to tell you was, you know, if you, if you hang around the, the smoking lounge at school, you're going to start smoking weed, then you're going to do heroin, and you're probably going to not go to college. So, you know, that's kind of what he was saying, right? Um, so he wanted you to hang around, you know, legitimate friends, which, which, is, which is a great um, cliche. Um, the, the one I like most is uh, you are the average of the five people you hang around the most, which is Jim Rohn, which is a brilliant saying. And, you know, masterminds have been alive for a hundred years. You can Google a photo and Google images of Harvey Firestone, who's Firestone Tires, Henry Ford, who's Ford um, Cars, uh, Thomas Edison, um, and somebody else. I can't remember the fourth person, but I think it was like one of the steel guys or railroad guys. And there's a picture of them sitting around a campfire talking and that that's like a mastermind of all masterminds like those four guys didn't get together by accident and say let's sit around a campfire and talk right. you know they got together because they're like hey let's share ideas and we can all get better from the sum of our parts and um and that's kind of what happens with abundance it's like we don't just get together and you know go out and get wasted basically what happens is we 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 do engaging activities during the day, like um, you know, we'll play ultimate frisbee or or broom ball or or just um, or, or just go hang out at you know somewhere and, and walk around. We'll do we'll do shared experiences. Let's just say you know shared experience. It could be fishing, right? We went we went ice fishing recently. Um, so shared experiences are the, the stock and trade of friendship. So what happens is when you, when you share these experiences, you become more authentic, you become, your guard goes down and, and you're able to share, you know, your true self, like, oh yeah, I'm having a little issues in my marriage or, you know, I really spend so much more time with my son and my daughter. And, and it allows your friends or, you know, the, the people with you to be like, dude, you know, that's, that's not cool. You know, you need to be spending equal time with your daughter and son or, or, you know, dude, you need to, you know, get in better health or quit smoking or, or you need to save some more money. You know what I mean? Um, you know, yeah, you're making a lot of money, but you're not saving any. And, and uh, so that stuff happens at our event. So it's really not for people that want to be massively private, you know, because uh, we're going to call you out on your stuff if it's not working, but it benefits people so much that they love it. And that's, that's how we've grown in like four years from three of us to over 200. That's awesome, man. Well, very cool. So obviously you can go to Amazon, but uh, if you're me and you'd rather have it for free, go to 
tribeofmillionaires.com and get the free book. Um, and Pat, where else should people follow you or, or catch up with what you're doing? Yeah, I'm lucky. You know, aside from some random dude who I think he's got a fake name in the Philippines, I'm the only Pat Hyben that I've been able to find, H-I-B-A-N. Um, so you could Google me and you could pretty much find me anywhere on social media. Um, the podcast is Real Estate Rockstars. Kevin's a regular. Um, and, uh, and, and, and so I'm easy to find. GoBundance website is GoBundance.com. If you're a woman listening to this, check out GoBundanceWomen.com. They are really, uh, really taking off. Very interesting uh, what's going on there. And, um, and that's it, man. That's, uh, I'm, you know, reach out to me, say hi. Um, I, I check my stuff regularly. Awesome. Uh, he absolutely does. And so highly recommend it. Check out that book, uh, tribe of millionaires.com follow Pat, wherever you uh, happen to hang out on social and, uh, listen to what Pat's got going on and some pretty good stuff. So Pat, hi, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule today, man, to share some time with us on the podcast. You're welcome, Kev. Thanks for having me on, boss. All right, buddy. Take it easy. And uh, next level listeners, we will talk to you soon. Have a great week.